Well, you've seen Visna and I lead worship together many, many times. But I think it's pretty fun that today we get to preach together. <laughs> I hope that's okay with all of you. <laughs> but I'm very grateful to Pastor Samadhi and the leaders for giving me the chance to share this morning. As many of you know, God has made it clear that it's time for our family to move to the United States. And even though it's truly heartbreaking for us to leave you, we choose to trust in the Lord. Just like I know that you will all continue to trust in the Lord. And do what He calls you to do. Because where God calls us to go is the best place we can be. And so we have the opportunity to share with you today about following the call to be a missionary. Jason got to share this message at Tulsan Kai this morning. And he'll be sharing this evening here at Stung Min Che as well. But this is a message that comes from our hearts. And it comes from our experience over the last couple of decades. <laughs> so we're excited to get to share it and impart it to you. Pastor Samadhi and the elders have said that 2021 is to be a year of outreach. It's a year that we're going to go out. Amen? Amen? What Jesus has already done in you, now he wants to do it through you to help other people. Let me say that again. What Jesus has already done in you. Now he wants to do it through you to help others. Amen. Amen. What has Jesus done in you? Think about that for a minute. What has Jesus done in you? Did he save you? Has he healed you? Has God healed you? Raise your hand if God has healed you. Amen. Almost Amen. all of us. Has God given you peace? Has God given you hope for your future? Yes. But have you experienced the true love of God? That love that is like no other love. Have you experienced that? Yes. Those things that God has done in you. Now he wants to do it through you. So why should we go? 
Because we are Jesus followers. And we follow his example. Jesus left his comfortable home in heaven. He came to the earth. He limited himself to a human body. He lived in discomfort. <laughs> he left that perfect relationship that he had with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And he limited himself to this earth. But he came to share that relationship that he has with the Father with us. He wanted us to have that same experience with the Father and with the Holy Spirit that he had with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And he knew what heaven was like. And he came to show us what heaven is like. He knew what the kingdom of God was supposed to be like. So he came to share that with us. John 3.16 says God so loved the world that he gave his son. So Jesus chose to come and the Father sent him. He had the blessing and the approval of the Father. And so we must follow his example. We choose to go. And we have the, the approval of our spiritual leaders. The number two reason why we should go is because Jesus told us to. <laughs> when he was here on this earth, in Matthew 28, in verse 19 and 20, he said, Go! And make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And verse 20 says, Teach them to observe all the things I've commanded you. And I am with you. So why should we go? Because Jesus said to. Amen. Amen. Another reason we should go. It's because we see the example set for us in the new in the New Testament in the early church. Just in case some of us try to make the excuse, oh Jesus, you're God, it's easy for you to go. <laughs> But, but I'm just a normal person. What can I do? I'm not God. So Jesus said go. And the disciples went. And after Jesus went back to heaven, the disciples continued to send more disciples. The book of Acts is full of stories of people that left their home and took the gospel to other people. Jesus 
We also see the example of the church in Antioch. Antioch was a large city. There was a large church there. And so Antioch was constantly sending believers out to strengthen other churches. Do you live in a large city? A few of you. Do you live in a large city? Are you part of a large church? Yes. Yes. Go. Take what you have and share it with others. Follow the example that God gives us in His Word. The believers in Antioch were normal people just like you and me. And they obeyed God's word and they went. And that is how the gospel spread around the world. Are you ready to go? Good. <laughs> so how should you prepare? I bet my first point is not one that you would guess. <laughs> the first thing we need to do is submit to our leaders and to God's process. Jesus chose to go but in submission to the Father. The believers in the early church chose to go but in submission to their church leaders. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. ចូលទុកចិត្តលើអ្នកដឹកនាំបងប្អូនព្រមទាំងស្ដាប់បង្កប់លោកទាំងនោះទៀតផងបាទលោកតែងតែថែរក្សាប្រលឹងបងប្អ
Or is it easier if you have two or three large suitcases and maybe a box? Which one? Which one is easier? The backpack? The, who thinks the backpack is easier? Who thinks the two or three suitcases and the box is easier? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> okay. If you're going to run for Jesus, you want to travel as light as possible. When you hold on to areas of weakness in your life, it's like you have two or three big suitcases. And it makes it a lot harder to go and to minister to people. If your leaders ask you to wait and to pray and to take more time, trust them. They want you to be free to run. Does that make sense? Yeah? They want you to be ready. So, so how should we prepare? We submit. Number two, how we prepare is we pray. What's holding you back from going? Ask the Lord to open the doors. Are there family members that don't understand what you want to do? Proverbs 16 says the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. So ask the Lord to work on your family members' hearts. Is money holding you back? Ask the Lord to provide. But also be ready to sacrifice. Don't just say to the Lord, Oh Lord, if you give me $20, I'll go on the mission trip. If you already have the $20 in your wallet. <laughs> Is God in debt to anyone? No. Every time we sacrifice and we obey, God provides. God provides. Amen. Amen. If it's His will, it's His bill, right? <laughs> It's an old missionary saying, right, Wayne? <laughs> Are you too busy? Oh, maybe the money one didn't hit you, but maybe this one will. Are you too busy to go? When your small group leader says, come on, we're going to go and help one of our provincial churches, and you say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm too busy. Are you too busy? Oh, you're too busy. Are you too busy? 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 Are you in charge of your schedule? Or is your schedule in charge of you? Would you rather spend your time doing something that will last forever 
or spend your time doing something that will just last for today. God gives all of us the same seven days a week. It's your choice how you use that time. Take a deep breath. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we pray that God will remove the hindrances. And we pray for those that we are going to help even if we've never met them before. Ask the Lord, what does He want to do for them through you? Before Jason and I moved here, the Lord told me he was sending me to Cambodia to sing and to prophesy and to set people free. And that wasn't about me and my abilities. That was a, it was about what he wanted to do here in Cambodia. So find out what the people's needs are before you go and begin to pray and ask the Lord, how can I help to meet those needs? You might have to face some of your fears. Maybe you feel afraid that you will get sick when you go. Maybe you're afraid of sharing your testimony with other people. Maybe you're afraid that when you lay hands and you pray for someone, nothing will happen. <laughs> Is it up to you? Is it because of your power? No, it's about God. It's His power. You get to do with him what he wants to do in that place. Amen. Amen. When I was preparing to come here, I had lived here already as a single in Cindy's house. And I had come back here as a wife with just Jason and I together. But in 2004 was my first time to come as a mom and bring my child with me. I didn't know what it was going to be like to raise children in Cambodia. But the Lord said to me, lose your fear. And I have to tell you that stepping out in obedience and working together with the Lord, you will lose your fear. Maybe you have to step out and start doing it even when you're still afraid. But as you do it, you will lose your fear. 
So as you're praying and preparing, listen to the Lord. Listen to him for a word. Listen for a scripture. Wait on him to receive a vision or a picture. Because when you start to step out in faith, the enemy is going to come against you. He doesn't want you to do what God's asked you to do. He'll try to discourage you. He'll try to distract you. And so you must wait on the Lord. And get a word from Him. Before we came here, I was dealing with that fear about raising my children in Cambodia. But the Lord said to me, because you are willing to go and care for the ones that I love. I will care for the ones that you love. And that word was tested. <laughs> Within the first couple months that we were here, Caleb got very sick. He was only a year and a half old. He's normally a very playful, very happy boy. But when he was sick, he wouldn't do anything but lay on the bed. He had no energy. He couldn't eat. We took him to the doctor. And they said it's just a bacteria in his stomach. But I was scared. I didn't have my mom with me here. I didn't know very many people here. But I remembered the word that God said to me. If you will go and care for the ones that I love. I will care for the ones that you love. So I said, Lord, remember your word. Heal my son. And he did. <laughs> so you will need a word to fight with. And you have promises in the word of God. Like the verse that we already read, Jesus said, go. And at the end of that verse, he said, I will be with you. Amen. 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 So take his word and fight with it. So what happens when we go? We get out of our comfort zone and we focus more on the Lord. It's during times of discomfort and sacrifice that we are more aware of His presence. Do you want to have a closer relationship with the Lord? Go. Depend on him. Spend some time out of your comfort zone. 
Identify with Christ in his sufferings. And you will grow closer in your relationship with the Lord. What happens when we go? He receives our acts of faith as worship and he sends his presence. When we simply step out in faith and obedience, He does miracles. When we begin to lift our eyes and see the needs that are around us. We can feel like, oh God, it's too big, it's too much. What can I do? We might feel, we might feel like that little boy with his five loaves and his two fish. But what did the little boy do with his lunch? Do you remember the story? He put it in the hands of Jesus. And church family, when we take our best, and we put it in the hands of Jesus, He multiplies it and makes it enough. In fact, He made it more than enough. Amen. Amen. So take your best. Even if it looks like just a little bit. And give it to Jesus. And trust Him to do the miracle. The third thing that happens when we go is that we get to be a part of what God is doing in other people's lives. In 3 John chapter 1, verse 4, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Some of you here are our uncles and aunties. Some of you are our brothers and sisters. But Jason and I have no greater joy than to see you walking with Jesus. God has done more than we could have imagined. And the... He is deserving of all the glory. And we are so thankful for each one of you. Thank you for welcoming our family into your family. As we go, we are excited for you. Because we know that Jesus will continue to build his church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. We love you.